Hey guys, we're back. We're not sick. It was horrendous, but we'll leave all the all that stuff. All that we're, stuff. We're, to we'll the update end. you at the very end. So but we'll... just to let you know, get yourself on over to the website because we have a twenty five percent off sale on everything, everything, and it's only for a week. Yeah. So it ends March Monday to Monday seven. So today's the twenty eighth, and it's going to be expiring on the seventh of March. Go check it out and use code SEAL. 25 at checkout to get your money off yeah so go ahead check it out but like well we'll update you at the end but let's get into this video real people who were obviously pcs i mean just <laughs> I'm, I'm not that curse okay fine look juan garrido a congolese i can already hear this balance screaming in the back i know a Congolese who was baptised by Portuguese explorers, rode their ship back, walked over to the border of the Spain, found a Conquisitor recruiting station, invaded Puerto Rico and Cuba, looked for the Fountain of Youth, looked for the Fountain of Youth with Ponce de Leon, participated in Cortes' conquest of the Aztec Empire, then wrote a letter to the king boasting of being the first farmer to plant wheat in the New World. Two Gun Cohen. Jewish cowboy who knocked out the robber of a Chinese restaurant and threw him out on the street. In gratitude, the owner invited him to join Sun Yat Sien's anti Queen. Queen? Yeah, it's the Queen. Oh, Queen? I can't say. Megan, you fucked me now. I can't oh, even say it. It's well, whatever. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a last Mongol Empire okay. in the little China. Secret society. And after the fall of Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this to me? Yeah, no, I can't say it either. And. S- and serving as a Canadian soldier in World War I, he moved to China and became Sun's bodyguard. Clearly, they had lenient GMs. Most definitely, they had lenient <laughs> yeah. GMs. Um, a few people come off to me like instantly. Um, I suppose the most famous, and I think a lot of like most of you guys, you guys know him. Fuck me, how would you not? Would probably be um, Roosevelt, hmm. uh, Theodore. Of course, he is a larger than life character, and he just has a lot of. Cow- like he's a fucking cowboy uh, yeah. with asthma yeah. <laughs> cowboy with asthma you know you can't make that shit up there, but there is plenty of excellent examples of mm-hmm. human beings that just go head and shoulders above and beyond mm-hmm. what normal humans just should not be able to today yeah um I think an easy one that anyone could use is like honestly like any gangster from like the 1920s because yeah. they all seem to have like that mythological or around them where you don't know what's what's fiction and what is yeah like Al Capone there's yeah, a lot you, of stuff out there about like, Al Capone well, you don't like, know, mm. is, is that hearsay is that yeah, are they just exactly. saying that about him because he's got that reputation yeah or was it true yeah you know um, I don't know I think it's really interesting if you guys have any of your own the only one I I, I used um, I used what's his name the Russian one Rasputin. Uh, Rasputin. fucking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <well. laughs> Rasputin, he is definitely, definitely. Um, but he was a great character. I mm-hmm. really enjoyed playing as him. But uh, if you guys have any of your own, like, have you guys ever used any characters from anyone, history? Anyone you could think of? There's so many examples. Like, yeah. But I'm looking forward to. Let's get into this. Charles Proteus Steinmetz. He stood just four feet tall. His body contorted by a hump in his back and a crooked gait. I'm and the nurse and he's hunchback or not without Yeah. And his stunted torso gave the illusion that his head, hands and feet were too big. <laughs> this, but, is a, this is an abysmal creature. But he was a giant among scientific thinkers, counting Albert Einstein, Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison as friends. Don't boast about Thomas Edison. <laughs> Who the fuck wants to be mates with Thomas Edison? <laughs> with Edison? And his contributions to mathematics and electrical engineering made him one of the most beloved and instantly recognisable men of his time. I've never heard. No, that's sad. I've I, never I, heard I feel of like uh, I feel like an <clears throat> uncultured swine. I know. Ford, whose electrical engineers couldn't solve some problems they were having with a gigantic generator, called Steinmetz into the plant. Upon arriving, Steinmetz rejected all assistance and asked only for a notebook, pencil, and cot. According to Scott, Steinmetz listened to the generator and scribbled computations on the notepad for two straight days and nights. On the second night, he asked for a ladder, climbed up the generator and made a chalk mark on its side. 
Then he told Ford's sceptical engineers to remove a plate at the mark and replace 16 windings from the field coil. They did, and the generator performed to perfection. Just by listening. You see, I've seen this once before, so I did electronic engineering um, in tech, and there was an old, old guy, um, teacher, uh, instructor, Phil you called him, and he had this ability with, if we went in and one of the PCs weren't working, I'm not even joking, he could bit them, he could kick them, and it would turn on. I am not making that up. I wish I was. I wish I, that was like a make believe story. And no one ever believes me when I was like, no, this guy could actually kick a computer back into work and order. Like, you know, it's like, you know, you slap the top of the TV and yeah. it just works. That's what he could do, but with a computer, it was amazing. Stop it. Henry Ford was thrilled until he got an invoice from General Electric in the amount of $10,000. Ford acknowledged Steinmetz's success, but balked at the figure. He asked for an itemized bill. Steinmetz. Scott wrote, responded personally to Ford's request for the following: making chalk mark, <laughs> making chalk mark and generator one dollar, knowing where to make mark nine thousand ninety nine. <laughs> I mean, like, look, Ford, you got the money. You, 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 you got the money. Ford paid the bill. John von Neumann also got to some super scientistic shenanigans. Some of the stories about him sound straight up impossible until you see the amount of things across so many different fields that are named after the guy. But he wasn't as charismatic. Oh, that's a shame. So uh, this is the basic template for Mad Santa's artificer build. Yeah. If you're going to be an artificer, you may as well be, be this guy. <laughs> be like really small, hunchback, <laughs> massive hands and feet. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, watch off. <laughs> Absolutely. So really, he was a goblin, or what else? Maybe a small no, bugbear. What I have in my head. What? Is the cartoon Merlin? Yeah. He's hunched over and he's always carrying books and like throwing things all over the no, show. No, I can't imagine for some weird reason. What he was it cousin Ed from the Adams family? The, with the hair? One? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I got the hairy one in mind, but like it's just what I, it's just what I imagine, guys. All right. General Butt Naked, the Satan worshipping Liberian warlord, an embodiment of chaotic evil. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely, he's the embodiment of it. Um, we'll we'll talk about him at the end. Let's just. General Butt Naked was a village priest who engaged in violent rituals even before the outbreak of the Liberian Civil War. Yeah, he became the witch doctor of his tribe at age like, 12. Yeah. So I've seen each of them. During the war, he formed a militia and would lead his forces into battle nude or wearing women's clothing while screaming and high on drugs. He believed that killing and eating children made him immune to bullets and also got his soldiers to participate in this. An eyewitness reported seeing the general standing on top of a truck holding an AK in one hand and a man's severed cock and balls in the other. The GM clearly decided this was all getting out of hand because according to the general, one day he had a vision of Jesus Christ who <laughs> told him to stop doing atrocities. And he became an invan- he became an evangelical preacher focused on helping former child soldiers. You know, he only uh, had that vision from God after his sight started losing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just just put Funny that, that there. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know you can actually message him on Facebook. I'm not saying you should. Do not, no, me- do, no, not. do not message him on Facebook. But, but you I'm, can't but and you don't can't. reply. Yeah, he actually he's pretty he's pretty open. Um so a few things that they didn't talk about with Jungle Butt Naked. The first thing is um, so it wasn't that the bullets wouldn't hit them. It was, they also believed that from the cross lesson that it would confuse the bullets because they think they would be shooting at women and the bullets would be confused by... Not men. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ask questions. Like... Like, it's not meant to make sense. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, tried, I've, I've really looked into this and I went through a really big phase of just honestly see West Africa in the 90s. Yes, I remember hell, that phase too. Hell on earth. You look at anything more brutal. You try and find something more brutal as um, as modern. You just will not find it. Um, yeah, definitely um, horrible things to behold. But one thing they didn't put in is so he would tie a child to a pole and what they would do is they would actually cut from the back mm-hmm. so they would like behind down uh, the spine down the spine and then they would be able to lift the heart out from behind while the child's still alive by the way this is very important mm-hmm. um, and then you would get gain like their essence or gain like the power from them it's a really horrible ritual to say yeah. the least and he performed this ritual a lot a lot um, like, a lot a, a lot, lot. Um, 
I think uh, we'll end it there though. Um, if you're interested in his real name is Joshua him. Joshua Blighty. Yeah. He's a very interested guy. Buys a bunch of useless currency during the Revolutionary War. Sells it all at a profit when it's over, making him filthy rich. George Soares, what are you doing? <laughs> Sells bed warmers to the West Indies for a healthy profit. Also sends warm mittens where Chinese traders happen to be there to buy them. Sells coal to Newcastle. Wait, is Newcastle not a mining town? Yeah, a large coal mining area at the time. Coal arrives during a miner strike and he sells all of it right away. Hoards whale bones and sells them for a large profit too, entirely by accident. Has a giant statue of himself with other figures like Washington and Napoleon that reads, I am the first in the East and the first in the West and the greatest philosopher in the Western world. He frequently told visitors that his alive wife had died and that the woman who frequented the building was simply her ghost. (laughs) (laughs) In one notable episode, Dexter faked his own death to see how people would react and about 3,000 people attended Dexter's mock wake. Then Dexter did not see his wife cry. He revealed the hoax and promptly canned her for not sufficiently mourning his death. (laughs) Releases a completely nonsensical book with zero punctuation in it anywhere. It's a huge hit, and hearing people complain about lack of punctuation, one of the re-releases has a page filled with just punctuation so that people may salt and pepper as they please. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a walking shit post. Like, you, like to me, he sounds like a walking shit post. Yeah. If I'm being honest with you, he's just walking he, shit post of all times. I'm, I'm like, I'm just here for the pure bounce. Man. <laughs> yeah. If I'm being completely honest with you, I'm, I'm honestly just here to fuck about. <laughs> Psst, hey, leaning closer. This is fucking ASMR channel now. You know what's pretty fucking beast? Titties, <laughs> go see titties. <laughs> Lots of titties. All the titties. <laughs> Go over to the website, check out all the models. You guys know the score. We have some really nice looking models over there. And we have a lot of... It's sci-fi gothic? Yeah. Let's call them sci-fi gothic. And if models isn't your shit, we have loads of subclasses and we keep adding them every other week or so. We, we, we Look, add we, a lot. We, we, we got a lot. Do you, do you Look, guys- we've got big brains. We add shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yes, go over to the website, check out everything. If you haven't subscribed... What the fuck you doing? Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell as well, and let's get back to the video. Every week we're going to be doing a giveaway of the new pinup model of the month, or if models isn't your thing, all of our homebrew content. If you want to be in with a chance to win the giveaway, all you need to do is subscribe. That's it. Hit the subscribe button. That's do it. it. <laughs> do it now. But last week's winner was this guy. Well Yay. done! Yay! Yay! Round of applause! Yeah. Everybody stands up and claps. But enough of that. Let's get back to the video. Otto Scorzini was clearly an evil PC from a very long campaign, or one that kept getting reused over and over again. Start- I mean, like, let's be honest with you, the, the Germans just do this shit every now well, yeah. and again. Starts in the SS during the attack on Moscow. Gets wounded and sent to hospital. Spends his time at the hospital theory crafting commando warfare strategy. Starts teaching commando tactics and is given his own unit and planned or took part in missions to liberate Mussolini, kidnap the son of the regent of Hungary, kidnap Tito, and possibly assassinate Roosevelt, Churchill and Stalin. Escaped prison after World War II and fled Germany. Became a military advisor in Palestine, Egypt, Argentina and Israel. Uh, Israel? <coughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. What? what? <laughs> oh, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. (laughs) Spent the rest of his life coordinating underground neo-Nazi and far-right groups, including what he described as an international dictatorship of strategic assault personnel that would straddle the watershed between paramilitary operations carried out by troops in uniform and the political warfare which is conducted by civilian agents. Also bought a farm in Ireland for some reason, even though he could only stay there six weeks at a time and did not like the people there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, he's not wrong. Like, you know, I mean, like, I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> 
Yeah, I can I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine that. You know, there's I I think honestly there's way better um, Germans to use as like um, evil characters. Like what do you call the guy? Um, Oscar Du Du I can never say his name, but he was next level. Or like you know maybe some like Mangala. Or like honestly, I I feel like Himmler's a great one as well. You know, yeah. Um, Himmler, I think Himmler. Himmler's yeah. a great character. Honestly, he's just he's just so fucking schizo. I know. You know, but honestly, the Nazis have just got so many different like next level schizos across the board. Yeah, you can work any of them into evil characters. And honestly, I would just take like elements of different ones and make like super Nazi. Super Nazi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I would do. Carlos Letter. Father was most likely a Nazi who married a Colombian woman, and so Carlos grew up and became inspired by two major historical figures, John Lennon and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> what a fucking combination. Well, yeah, that's a good call. I actually kind of think that's a, call. That's a good yin and yang. <laughs> Started smuggling stolen cars between US and Canada and went to jail for car theft where he met George Young. Oh, yeah, that was a guy I remember... Think he did the movie Blow, it was called. Oh, yeah. Depp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. He was like a big. Yeah. Yeah. The two partnered up and started smuggling cocaine using small aircraft to stay under the radar. Eventually became the drug czar of a small island in the Bahamas called Norma's K. Oh, yeah, that's Fire Island. Became... Do you remember they said about oh, Fire yes! Island? Yes! <laughs> yeah. And became a billionaire. Yeah, yeah. Lost it all when the GM decided that it was too OP and had the Bohemian government. Bahamas. Bah- <laughs> Bohemian. Bohemian, yeah. Is that how you say it? Bohemian? Yeah. I don't know. Bohemian government frees all of his bank accounts. Eventually captured at the farm he had established in Colombia. He was extradited and sentenced to life without parole plus 135 years. And in 1992, in exchange for Letter's agreement to testify against Manuel Norgia. Alright, we'll say that. His sentence was reduced to a total of 55 years. Eventually, through legal proceedings, wins his freedom and gets extradited to Germany in 2020. I mean, that's not bad going. Like, yeah. you know, honestly, like, say if I be honest with you, like, I don't know, maybe it's my whole view on the war dogs being fucking pointless, but the CIA was fucking doing this for ages, <laughs> so I ain't seen no fucking issue. Too shh. <laughs> <I'm listening. laughs> she. Let's talk about the chaotic neutral Sir Thomas Cochrane. Born in Scotland in 1775, fraudulently registered as being in the Royal Navy his whole childhood by his family to get money, actually joins the Navy at 17, becomes a lieutenant by the age of 20, gets court-martialed for flippancy and disrespect, gets away with it, gets promoted to being a captain of a small 14-gun brig called HMS Speedy and sent to harass the French in the Mediterranean. I can't believe it's called fucking Speedy. Speedy. (laughs) Speedy? It sounds like a fucking hamster. (laughs) Speedy (laughs) button. Captures, sinks, or runs aground 53 ships in one year. Jesus Christ. That's not a bad one. Encounters the Spanish 32-gun frigate El Gamo. El Gamo is about four times the size of Speedy. Cochrane says fuck it, attacks El Gamo anyway. Realises if he gets into point-blank range, they can't shoot him. When the Spanish tried to board, he just moved Speedy out of range, forcing the Spanish to run back to their guns. Whereupon they got back to the point blank range. After an hour, boards El Gamo and captures it. As per Royal Navy rules of the day, the Navy pays Cochrane by the ship he captures, making him very rich. Enters politics with the aim of ending the corrupt purchase of seats in Parliament. Loses election due to vote buying. <laughs> Why is it always keys? Why do they always do this shit? Comes back at the next election and wins due to vote buying. <laughs> at one point, Cochrane's friends got into a bit of trouble with the law. Cochrane said he'd help him out. Cochrane helps him out by getting together some old crewmates and attacking the arresting officers with a cannon. <laughs> he gets away with this. Cochrane also got involved in the great stock exchange fraud. In 1814, a man fraudulently claimed Napoleon was dead and the war was over. The value of government bonds briefly skyrocketed, then plunged once the hoax was uncovered. Turns out the day before the fraudulent claim, six guys bought a 1.1 million of government bonds which they sold during the price spike. 
Cochrane is one of them. <laughs> this... <laughs> Nancy, what are you doing back then? <laughs> this gets discovered. Cochrane is arrested, tried, found guilty. But there's a public backlash because he's a naval hero, so he only gets fined £1,000. Not bad. Oh, but we're not done with Cochrane just yet. Oh. No, sir. Oh, okay. Cochrane moves to Chile to get away from scrutiny becomes Admiral in Chilean Navy and is tasked with winning Chilean independence. Refused to speak Spanish. Tried to force entire Navy to speak English. (laughs) (laughs) Uncontrollably (laughs) base. Succeeded anyway. Chile won its war of independence. Then goes to Peru and helps them win its own war of independence. Returns to Britain, is forgiven for everything and is given a seat in the House of Lords. Dies aged 84. Not bad. Beast one. man is beast. Yeah, I think you know. Honestly, as far as you know, there's something about that whole entire era of just human beings from like the 15th, 16th, and 1700s. Yeah, they're just seem they. There's so many people like this that just seem to come about so often. Yeah, there's so many different. It's like people just had nothing. People just well, had nothing do- to lose back then. They're like, fuck it, fuck it, let's do it. This shit. You yeah. know what I mean? People seem to be way more up. To do in the most incredible it's like dog the shit. Seven, the 17 and 1800s is just like old age jackass. It's like, let's yeah. just fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it is. That's what it but, is. But there was definitely, there seems to be that that entire time period, there just seems to be so many fucking mentals mm-hmm. everywhere you look in the world. Yeah. There's just, and it's so hard to tell. And by that point, you can kind of tell what's true and what isn't. It's yeah. starting to get more and more. Okay, this isn't like me. This isn't just a made up story. People of yeah. This this seems to be more real than yeah. fake. You know, and it's it's a bit more clear on what is real and what is fake. And yeah, I'm gonna assume most of it leads on the real side. I hope. <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, who who would you say, Megan? Is there anyone you could think of? Um, that would stand out. Honestly, you could just say anyone from King Dark's fucking Mad Lad videos. Yeah. There's purple Aki kind of one. Well. <laughs> <laughs> purple Aki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Draken Lord. Yeah, he would de- yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, fuck, kind of, I think we actually did do one on Jungle Butt Naked, so he does. Yeah, he did. Come I think to think so. of it. Yeah, he did. it was one of his first ones. Yeah. But uh, no, there's so many great examples. I, I, the thing is, I think it's hard to place what classes they were a lot of the time, but you can tell when some human beings just seem to go they just seem to be so much more capable than everyone else around them and they just seem to be able to get themselves into situations and just overcome such great odds that you only ever read about in storybooks yeah it's some people just have that ability to overcome anything that's thrown at them and they don't just overcome it they fucking they backflip. It. They backflip yeah. that shit and dab on, yeah. <laughs> on the other end. And teabag it. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like, absolutely amazing. Obviously. And but, it happens more often yeah. than what you would, what people like doing that. If you guys have any, uh, yeah, if you, you have know, any good, or, like real people who uh, could be really good PCs, y- or you know what, give me, give me a character to play. I, I would love a new idea for another character. Give me an idea for one. Like, give me like someone. And then give me like what they would be and what would their subclass be. You know what I mean? Yes, like, and their alignment and stuff. Yeah, Let us know alignment. down below. This will definitely not get controversial at all. Ah. Definitely not. You and know. while you're down there, check out the website because twenty five percent off. Yeah, Go 20. over, you seal twenty five at checkout on everything. Yeah, that's a pretty good seal. Just saying, pimp guys. out your gameplay at neckbeardia.co.uk Oh, yeah. I'm rhyming. Yeah. Yeah. Put on a dozen um, but yeah, well, yeah, we'll give the, yeah, you guys the updates on what all happened then. No, we're just sick as fuck. Yeah, so pretty much we got COVID, right? So Megan got COVID, then the child got COVID, then I got COVID for a day. I was like, that's, that's shit. <laughs> anyway, then that was all fine. Then we were better for like f- oh, five days. Five days, and then... I got strep. No, it was ch- the child got his g- gacky eyes first. Oh yeah, he got conjunctivitis. And then Megan got strep through and then I got strep through and I literally thought I was going to die at one point. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I really didn't think it was... James, no. this is a wee bit dramatic. No, yeah. I'm, I'm telling Do, you. Like, who would ever thought... I thought... I, 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 <laughs> who I, would I, ever have thought James is dramatic, but he is a, he is a wee bit. They, I, I, I actually thought I was going to die. <laughs> I'm not even... COVID? Nah, that's, that's shite. What are you on about? You know My I mean? tonsils are still the size of testicles <laughs> right now. They're still <laughs> yeah, fucking massive. They fucking are. Fucking disgusting. Like, I... <laughs> I can, I can do the best 
<coughs> wiki impression now because they just bang off each other. <laughs> oh. They're just like swinging balls. Oh, God. Oh, oh, I can't lie. Oh, oh, that's a <laughs> shame. Oh, 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 I can't. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was bad. It was fucking brutal, so it was. Um, but yeah, like you know, it's just yeah. I hope not... everybody's like staying safe and staying. Oh out yeah, and fuck. Shit. <laughs> I, I I don't imagine many people be watching this because yeah. there's a lot of other stuff in the news at the minute, which Our is are with Ukraine. And yeah, all the I feel bad for all you guys over there. Like you know, honestly, if you're watching this at the minute, like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Saddy, please stop. This isn't you putting. Yeah. Either way, it's a bit mad. Hopefully, this all dies down and this is, doesn't get blown. Like it's already been blown wider proportion to what it already is. Let's hope I, it doesn't go any further. Yeah, that's that's essentially the way I see it. Um, I think me and we're we're going to be doing a video some week with Garbo, and I really want to talk a wee bit about Ukraine at, in that at some stage. But we're going to be focusing on a different topic. But it might be something that we might. Touch into. on, yeah. Touch on during yes, that, but stay um, safe. Ch- what, check out the website, hit subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Seal twenty five at checkout. <laughs> Fucking back.